I'd like you to create a number guessing game, okay? And what I'd like you to do is generate a random number and I'd like you to give the player the ability to choose a level of difficulty. I'd like you to give them, and based on that, I'd like you to change the range of the numbers that they're guessing. And I'd like to, you to give them three guesses per number, per random number that is generated. So this is sort of a challenge. Do you accept my challenge? Do you accept this? Um, <laughs> your mission, should you choose to accept it? Remember the old Mission Impossible things with the Tom Cruise? But your mission, should you choose to accept it, ultimately, is to produce a number guessing game. That let's the player guess three different numbers, choose a level of difficulty, you change the range that they're guessing in based on the level of difficulty they choose, and you must give them three wrong guesses per number, and I want you to count the wrong guesses and assign a score based on how many they get right, okay? And also, I want you to give them a hint. I want you to give them feedback on whether your number is bigger or smaller, okay? so. The first thing we're gonna do, let me actually open up my test. To look at this simply, the, the very first or easiest way to do this, one byte at a time, we're not gonna, we're not gonna give them three separate numbers and three guesses per number yet. We're just gonna generate one random number and we're gonna give them three guesses for that one random number, okay? So we have a minimum and a max. Remember we talked about why you wouldn't want to hard code values in your program. So we're using variables. The players guess their score. We generate a random number between minimum one and maximum five. We always add one. There's that off by one issue. Display number guessing game. Guess my number between min one and max five in this case. You get three guesses. Well, here's a for true. Uh, a, a for loop, right? So, oh, well, true and for true. <laughs> Fortran. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, here's a basic for loop. All right. So we initialize Z to be zero. As long as Z is less than three, so zero, one, two, it'll loop how many times? Three times. Postfix increment Z. That's our basic for loop. Then everything between this opening brace and this closing brace down here, all this code is what will happen three times. Three repetitions, three iterations, all that code. Do I have to indent? No. But does indenting, taking the time to indent and write neat code, make my code easier to follow, easier to modify, easier to debug? Heck yeah, it does. Heck yeah. Okay, so read host, in this case taking input from the player, but remember read host always returns a string. So what do we have to do? If we're gonna do some math with it, or do some comparisons with it, we have to convert it from a string data type to an integer or numerical data type. All right, if guess is less than minimum, hey, they guessed outside the range. If guess is greater than maximum, hey, they guessed outside the range. And then on the other hand, finally some nesting here. Nested, remember we talked about nesting in our previous videos? But they, if it's, if it's not below the range or not above the range, if it's valid, then we're going to say, hey, um, did they guess it? If so, they guessed it. We increment score z equals 3. So we, in this case, we'll iterate or we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and break out of this loop here. Um, I, I, I could also do this if I wanted to. I could use the keyword break, but we'll go over that later. So for now, what I'm doing, if I, if I set z to be 3, what will happen? This loop will stop, right? because this loop in the test condition portion, it's only gonna loop as long as z is less than three. If I set z to be three, then I'm effectively ending this for loop, right? Okay, well, guess is greater than the number, and then I'll give them feedback. If it's greater than, number was smaller. If not, then hey, my number was bigger. Finally, we wanna show them what that random number was. You know, how do they know we're not lying to them? Or how do we know the computer's not lying to us? Okay, and then we'll display their score. So here we go. Um, hit F5. 
You make guess between one and five. You get three guesses. I'll start in the middle. Three. Guess is valid. The number was bigger. I'll go to four. Within range, number is bigger than five. I did it. I guessed a number. Yay. My number was five. I guessed five. The score, my score is now one. Okay? See that? Now, what happens if I guess outside the range? I'm going to hit F5 again. Let's say that I add zero. Invalid guess, less than minimum. So that works as we wish. What if I guess 10? Invalid guess greater than maximum. Again, that does what we want. I get one last guess. I'll guess three. My number was bigger. My number was five. In this case, I didn't win anything. Okay, so there's that kid. But we need to get a little more sophisticated. If, if we're going to give the player three different random numbers, and if we're going to generate three different ranges of random numbers based on their selection of a level of difficulty, and if we're going to give them three wrong guesses for each number in a sequence of three, we're going to have to do a lot of nesting, right? Nesting repetition structures, nesting um, decision structures, our logic is going to implement several different types of nesting. So here we're using our code to create a menu. They can choose a difficulty level. All right. This is just to give you an idea. If, if, if I gave the user a menu, I would lock it in a while true loop. Why? Because I need this to keep looping as long as, you know, until they give us something valid. I'm only wanting one, two, or three. If they type in B or A or Z, you know, that's, I'm sorry, but their argument is invalid. We don't want to let them out of the loop. It's, they're just making nonsense. And we don't want to let the user out of this structure here, out of this loop, until they give us a meaningful value. And so a way to, to do that is to, you know, at the console, you can put every menu at the console inside of a while true loop. And while menu loop is equal to loop, okay? So it's initialized, it starts out as loop, but if, if they choose a valid option, and there's a dozen different ways to do this, and this is actually a less efficient way, but just to get your creative juices flowing, I hope, I'm gonna show you the long way home a few times, and then I'll show you other methods and, and, and more, you know, shorter, or more shorthand ways of coding things like menus. So in this case, if I set this to be exit and it's no longer loop, right? Well, what's the condition? Well, menu is equal to loop. Well, once this is not loop, once it becomes exit or any other value other than loop that I assign to it, then this loop will break. We'll let the player out of the loop, okay? So they can choose one, two, or three, but if they choose anything else, we won't let them out of the loop and we'll simply say invalid choice, choose again. Okay, does that make sense? Let's run this. Choose a level of difficulty. I'll choose a valid option, one. All right, that's good. Run it again, I'll choose a valid option, three. That's good. But if I run it this time, what if I choose something else? What if I choose 10? Invalid choice, press any key to continue. Okay, and in this case, it clears and it just goes right back. What if I type in banana, all right? So this is by no means foolproof, but at least it is a start. We're at the very basic beginning of looking at bulletproofing our code, coding our scripts, writing our logic to deal with nasty, ill-tempered end users who try to cash our or who try to crash our code on purpose. <laughs> no, not always. A lot of times it's by accident. But, but in other words, you know, we as a programmer, as as the author, we we're expecting a certain type of value. We know what we want, and we know what the what PowerShell needs, what PowerShell can handle and, and process. But sometimes the people that we write these scripts for, they have no idea. You know, it's through no fault of their own. Um, it, it could be malicious intent, but many times it's not. And so you start thinking, well, how can I code my program to fail more gracefully when the user does something crazy that we're not expecting? 
And so in this case, an else here. And that just gives us a way to catch that. Okay, let's move on. Final version four. All right, so we're going to generate a random number here. We're going to use a while true loop and let the player choose a level of difficulty. And if we do, that's going to change the the range. So easy one through five, uh, a normal one through ten, and hard would be one through one hundred. Okay. Now look where we're creating this random number. See that? It's inside the for loop. So we're going to iterate three times still. Numbers to guess is, is three. But now we're going to get a different random number each time. Okay. And let's go ahead and run this code. So here's our basic number guessing game. This is sort of our, our first you know, somewhat fun or, or maybe interesting project, um, but we're using, look at all that we're combining, everything we've learned so far, data types and variables, um, repetition structures, so we have a while true loop and a nested outer and inner for loop. Um, we have decision structures, we have a switch statement for our menu, correct, right? We have if and else and else if, and we have an else, and within that, we have nested more if else to make our decisions. So in this project, we're combining everything that we've learned so far and, and your mission, should you choose to accept it, mission impossible. Da, 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 da. Um, <laughs> uh, your challenge, I challenge you, oh coder, oh player, should you accept it, I want you to create the ultimate number guessing game. And I want you to allow the player to choose levels of difficulty. And I want you to give them, you know, three separate numbers. And I want you to give them three guesses per number and keep score. And you can even improve upon this. Um, it wouldn't be hard to modify. Okay, I'm generating a random number. And that should give us three different random numbers. But potentially, it's possible I could generate the same random number twice, you know? Um, it's a pseudo random number generator, but I might generate a four and I might generate a three and then a four again. And if I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't be difficult to modify, you could just add a couple of lines of code. If I wanted to make sure that I didn't generate the same random number in each iteration, what I could do is I could store the random number someplace and I could compare it. And if the random number that got regenerated equaled the stored number, I could simply call get random again. And I could plug that into a while true loop and have it keep generating a random number until it generates a random number that had not been previously generated. Okay, so that's, I think I might leave that. That wouldn't be difficult. You could do that. You could add two or three more lines of code here and you could make the game do that and ensure that you would have three separate random numbers. So that is your challenge. Should you choose to accept it? Show me how you would code that, okay? But if we run it, they choose the difficulty, they're gonna get three different numbers, all right? And they're gonna get three guesses per number. We'll test the range, make sure that it's not beneath the minimum or over the maximum, and then if it's valid, neither beneath minimum or over maximum, we will see, did they guess it? Let them know, increment their score, break out of the loop, or give them a clue. Hey, um, if it's greater than, my number's smaller. If it's not greater than, then my number was bigger. And at the end, we'll display score, okay? Here we go. Choose a level of difficulty. I'm gonna choose two. So guess for number, I'm gonna start at five. Number was bigger, seven. Number was smaller, I guessed it, all right? Number, again, our second number, we'll start guessing, I'll start at five again. 
Number of smaller, three. Wow, I guessed it. This is pretty lucky. And our last number down here. I'll start at five again. Number was bigger. I'll go all the way to nine. I'll go to seven. Oh, in this case, I missed it because the random number was six. All right. So does that make sense? If you look at the output, look at the output, look at the code, play with it, tweak it, go through it kinesthetically. See how it works, break it, fix it, modify it, change it, make this code better. There's so much you could add that could make this game more fun and make this game more interesting. More, you know, sky's the limit. Paint, now you have colors in your palette. So paint something with your code. I'd like to see what you come up with. And if there's enough space, I'll, I'll throw this in the description tag, okay? So I guess that's it for repetition structures. In our next series of videos, we're gonna be talking about arrays and classes.